Hi everyone and welcome. Today we're going to be looking into the Choreograph Mass Library to run through and understand what the mass behaviours do. So if you want your robot to do your mass homework for you, then please stay tuned. Hi guys, I'm Philip English from RoboPhil.com. Now on this video, we're looking to teach you how to use the mass behaviours that are in the mass library tool on your now robot. We will do this by running through each behaviour one by one and solving some mass equations. But first off, a cheeky Phil robot plug. If you'd like to get your hands on a now robot or any other educational robots, then please visit my RoboPhil online store. Here you will find a whole selection of the latest educational robots. Isn't that right now? Great. Right, hi guys. So today we are going to be looking at the mass library. Uh, first of all, let's check to see if the robot's online. Give him a little wiggle. Yep, his arms are moving, so he is connected. And uh, we're going to have a look at the behaviours in the mass library. So um, the mass related box is for the library are um, dividing box and there's a multiplying box and there's also a couple of generating random number boxes that we're going to go through. Uh, what it hasn't got, it hasn't got an adding or subtracting box um, aren't provided. So what we're going to do is first have a look at the divided box. We've got four to go through and we have a look at the divided one just to show you how it all works and um, to give you an idea of what you can do with it. So we drag, we drag in a divide box, there we go, there it is. Now what we want to do is um, divide, as you can imagine, is what it says on the tin. It will take two numbers and it will bring a N number output, uh, which is, which is the, the division of those two numbers. So what we need is some numbers. So we will use a number editor in this case, and I'll pop that in there. We need two of them, so we'll double it up. And um, the dividing box performs division using the two numbers that came in through the input and then produces the result from the output. So the first box, this one here, is dividend and the second box is the divisor. Now as you can see, these are all yellow in the divide box, which means that it takes numerical signals and nothing else. So if we connect up all the noodles, and so let's say 10, make it an easy one, divided by two, and we attach it up, so that's the top and that's the bottom, 10 divided by two. Now if you have a look on the right hand side, and if I hit play, there we go, five, nice and simple. So it's easy peasy. Now what we can do, uh, we can just make it a little bit more in interactive and we can just have a say box um, in here as well and we'll get our little robot interacting. So as before, I've shown this before in other tutorials, if you drag a say box, click into it, and you want to copy this component of it, copy and paste into the main box. So this way he will only say um, what the outcome of the divide box will be. So I've attached that, and if he behaves himself and he's a, big, a good robot. 5.0. There we go, 5.0. Brilliant, it's really good now today. So that was nice and easy for the first one. So again, you can use the divide box if you're building the game or any, any mathematical questionnaires um, or anything you're using to build scripts. Um, this is how you use it. So next one is the multiply box. So if we type in the search, oh, uh, multiply, there we go, drag that in as well. Now this works exactly the same, but obviously as you can guess, it multiplies the numbers instead of divides them. So again, it's got two inputs. So what we would do is we will cut the inputs from this one, uh, cut that one and cut that one, and we will attach them into the top and the bottom. Again, it times is um, the, the, the 10 by the two. And if I hit it without the now, there we go, 20 on the right hand side. And if we have it with the now, so we can get him doing it a little job, and hit the play button, 20.0. 20.0, brilliant. Good job now, good job. So that's the uh, divide and the multiplier. Right, so the other one is the random int. So this is where, again, if you're building a game or you're building something that the kids can use and you just need a random number, so each time the robot can think of a, of a new number to use and, and it, it mixes up 
and whatever the game is being. Otherwise it gets a bit boring if the game is always doing the same numbers. This throws a bit of randomness in it and it makes it a little bit more fun. So uh, to do this, again, we will just type into the search field. Random ints, there we go, drag that in. Pop it down here, we'll pop it this side actually. Right, now this one is slightly different. Um, so the random int box generates random integers where the minimum value is zero and the maximum value is determined by the parameter. So this one has its own little cog. If we click that there, so as you can see, that is a min value of zero and a max value of 10. So that is as far as high or low the uh, that the robot uh, will actually work out. So this is the example. If we cut all these little bits off here, bring this down here, bring it over here. So the ones we've done. Uh, we'll just cut this all off here so it's not going to get confused. And we'll bring the save box down this side. We'll plug it straight in this time. Makes it a little bit easier. And again, so he will he was basically going to think of a random number between 0 and 10. So let's give it a go. Let's hit the play button. 7. 7 is the first one. Very random. 1. 1. And that's the second one. So to change this, obviously you go in here, use a little spanner, and let's say 100 and uh, 250. So now he's got a range of that, of 100, between 100 and 250. So let's hit the play button. 129. Okay, and one more time, for example. 228. 228, there we go. So there's in his parameters. So as you can see, you can use that in a whole variety of ways. Um, now, the max is the maximum value of the random number of which is a range. So the ranges are from 0 to 1, 000, uh, to 1 times 10 to the power of 9. So it's quite a lot, it can go quite high. Uh, the random index box are activated only once, so the timer box or loop box must be used in order to continuously generate random numbers. So when, again, if you're building a game or a questionnaire, a mass questionnaire, then you have to get a little bit more advanced and um, use the timer box or loop box. But I'll produce other materials where um, we see that in action. So the last one, uh, not least, is the random float. So we've already got it up here because we've typed in random into the search folder. So we drag this down here. And, oh, no, let's keep everything in one screen. Uh, so let's quickly shuffle everything around just so it's tidy. Always keep your, uh, your box tidy so it's easy to go through and you're not gonna get confused. The random float again we we'll attach it straight up again it has um, only one input and one output uh, the difference is that the floating point instead of uh, oh sorry the difference is that the floating point instead of integer and there is no shuffle and the maximum value can be set adjusted maximum so basically what this means is that you can get a bit more precise with the random float so if you have a look in here we have obviously lots of um, zeros after the decimal place so if we're going to get very precise with the now. So we're going to go 10, for example, and let's say 12. No difference. And if we hit the play button now. 10.9 Brilliant. So as you can see, uh, he gets a little bit more detailed, uh, goes past the decimal place. Um, he's a little bit juddery because the connection is a bit slow today. I'm not sure, quite sure, but we'll we have another go. 10.1180667871. Uh, Brilliant, thank you now. And again, you can have a shuffle around with these uh, bars to give you some more randomness. And uh, let's just do it one time. This is between about 60 and about 700, so let's see what we get. 595 Brilliant. So the maximum value can be set by adjusting the max as we've just done and has a range of 0.0, .0 all the way up to 9.9 .9 times 10 to the power of 13. So again guys, you can use these boxes when you're building uh, possible games or quizzes and um, of course if you have any homework that you want to work out, you can also use now as a calculator. Brilliant. I hope you enjoyed that guys. Thanks very much. Well done guys, you are now a robot mass expert that can program your robot to do any complicated math sum. Now have a play with this behaviour and try out other equations and behaviour combinations to see if your now is always correct. Have a play guys and use your imagination.
And don't forget guys, if you're after a now robot or any other educational robots, then please visit my RoboFill store, where you'll find the latest educational robot tech. If you like this and want even more free video tutorials, news and information, then please visit us at robofill.com where you can download the latest free ebooks and get insider information and techniques of how to become a robot expert. Now if you like this robot video and want to see even more of the latest robot news, reviews and robot tutorials, then please hit the subscribe button to get up to date with the latest videos that come out. Please have a look below as well where I've put links relating to these videos as well as other information and web links for your review. If you have any questions or want to see any other Robot Tutorials or videos, then please write me a message in the comment section and I'll see what I can do. Thanks guys and looking forward to see you next time.